Hey guys, how you doing? Just uh, on my way home from the grocery store, right after work. Had a really beautiful day today, actually. Really beautiful day today. All the customers were happy, everything was so relaxed. What a wonderful day it was. Just had wonderful conversations with wonderful people who were buying toys for their children and their nephews and their nieces. and Just a nice Sunday, you know? Really, really feel blessed to have such a beautiful day. Ah, uh, but what's been banging around in my head? I, I'm beginning to wonder. Like, I, I am really beginning to wonder, right? Like, I think, I'm, I think I'll title this one Capitalists. Evil or Stupid. Because it's really becoming quite apparent that, like, some evil things are happening. And that's become obvious, right? Like, there's a reason why there are giant protests. There are a reason why there are riots. There are a reason why these things are happening. And it's because people are seeing the overt evil of the capitalist class and are responding to it. And I mean, many of them are rapists and pedophiles and they're obviously just evil. But there's this other group of sort of capitalist defenders. I'm thinking about people like Ben Shapiro, people like our premier Doug Ford, uh, who really are beginning to make me wonder, right? Like, are these guys just evil? Like, are they sociopaths? Or are they just really stupid? And it's kind of a back and, and, and I don't know, it, is, does it even matter? Like, does it even matter? Does this distinction even matter to make between are they evil or are they stupid? Because I suspect it could be both, right? A person can be both evil and stupid. And I suspect that it takes a great deal of stupidity to be evil, seeing as how self-defeating it is, you know? Uh, and how it kind of crushes oneself to be evil. The uh, because I mean I get thinking about this because Doug Ford, he stands up in front of the whole province in the middle of a pandemic as they're cutting supports for people with disabilities. Uh, and someone asks the Ford administration, hey, in the middle of a pan pandemic, why are you cutting support services for people with disabilities? And his response, he attempts to do this thing that politicians do where he, he makes a whole long-winded string of words and puts them together so it's difficult to decipher what he's actually saying. But he's a Ford, so he's stupid and clumsy, and he's bad at it. And ultimately, he just comes out and says that, oh, they should go get jobs. Now, not only is this vicious and cruel, it's also exceptionally stupid, right? These people are on disability. They are on disability. They are disabled. We're talking about people who are living their lives in wheelchairs. We're talking about people who do not have limbs. We're talking about people who might be blind, uh, have hearing issues. We're talking about people who have all kinds of uh, difficulties dealing with themselves and dealing with the environment around them on a day-to-day -day level, right? And then to turn around and say that the solution for their problem is to go get a job is stupid and it's not only stupid it's vindictively cruel and evil and if you're a person who actually thinks and you actually say to people out loud uh, oh disabled people who have trouble even getting groceries for themselves should just go get a job uh, you are stupid and evil and I have no, and I'll say that to your face, if you like. You come find me. I'll say it directly to your face, and I won't 
feel bad about it. <laughs> I don't feel bad calling evil stupid people evil and stupid. That's why I support punching Nazis. Right? If you're going to walk around saying, yeah, Nazism, we should be Nazis, then you should get punched in the face as hard as someone can punch you in the face. Like, I, I feel like we should... The crime for walking around, the, the, the crime of walking around saying that I support Nazism should be that we should find John Jones, right? Uh, former, where is he current? Anyway, the uh, UFC light heavyweight champion, and he should be able to punch you as hard as he possibly can uh, for the, just making that statement. That's something that should definitely happen to you. If you think that being a Nazi, if you stand up and say that Nazism is fine, or if you wear the swastika or any of that kind of stuff, we should allow trained fighters to punch you in the face, in precisely the location, to cause the maximum amount of damage to your brain, in the hopes that the jostling of the brain might realign in such a way that the stupid falls out or it becomes no longer possible for you to hold on to this absolutely insipid and uh, uh, incredibly stupid idea that it is fine to be a Nazi. And, and I just, like, the stupidity, especially of, like of the Ford administration, has become, like, extra stupid. Uh, he cut funding for uh, Hamilton tra Transit, right? Hamilton is a sort of mid-sized city here in Ontario. Um, now, if you are cutting transit services at all, for any reason, you are either incredibly evil because you're basically saying to a group of people, you no longer get the ability to move around uh, and have freedom of movement because you're poor, basically. You don't have a car? Go fuck yourself. That's essentially what you're saying. Or you're blisteringly incompetent. And the reason why you're blisteringly incompetent is that uh, we know for a fact, and th this is a hardline fact at this point, like this isn't debatable anymore, that for every dollar you put into transit, you get four dollars back. And that's just, like, obvious, right? People can move around more. People can go to grocery stores easier. People can go buy things easier. People can go to jobs easier, right? People can move around easier. Uh, and so there's freedom of movement. And because there's freedom of movement, that increases economic activity. And as we've done the studies, we see that it increases economic activity by a factor of four, four times. So if you are cutting transit services, it is because you want to reduce the quality of your economy, period, period. There, and there's no other explanation for it. You're not saving money. You are losing money, right? Now, if you're a sociopath conservative, or I, I don't know why I say a sociopath conservative. If you're a conservative, you are a sociopath. If you're a conservative, the, uh, there is a line of thought that says, oh, well, if we don't provide the service or if we cut funding on the service so that it's reduced, then we can make the claim that it's government bureaucracy that's the problem and not, the, not our assault on the system. And then we might be able to privatize it, which is just a way for them to steal uh, a, a system away from the people and, and put money into their own pockets. Which, as I've always discussed on this channel, uh, uh, they have to raise rates in order to justify their wage because they don't do anything, right? Uh, and so the quality of the service is either diminished or the price of the service has to go up. And that's just how it works, right? You have to pay for a person who wasn't there in the first place who isn't actually doing anything because they're incompetent and stupid and they don't know anything, right? Like, uh, this, is, this, is, this is how this works. Uh, and so... My gut tells me that that's probably what Ford is aiming at, because Ford is also aiming at, in the midst of, uh, in the midst of a gigantic long-term care scandal. So here in Ontario, there is 
this just massive long-term care scandal going on where during the COVID-19 crisis, the military is called in in order to help with long-term care facilities. Uh, I don't think there's anything uh, um, controversial about that. I think if, if, if we need extra hands and it's an emergency uh, and it's a crisis, calling in the military in order to, to aid, absolutely perfect. So the military goes into these establishments and their report uh, shows uh, some absolutely disgraceful behavior happening in these facilities. Places not being cleaned, uh, dishes not being cleaned, uh, 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 the elderly that are in their care not being bathed, sometimes upwards of six weeks. Like, this is despicable behavior, right? And, and it, this is what's occurring in the privatized long-term healthcare facilities. Uh, because, and it's for very simple reasons, right? Capitalists are sociopaths and they don't care about uh, anything except profits for themselves. And so in the midst of this crisis that's going on, and of course Ford, he stands up and, and he says, of the ones that have been reported, there will be reprimands and all this kind of stuff. Nothing's going to happen, right? Conservatives don't attack other conservatives. They're buddies with one another. They're not going to hurt one another. Uh, no matter what, like maybe a little slap on the wrist, but like the fact that we don't know the, the names of the owners of these facilities tells you exactly who the media works for, right? Who, who, who owns these long-term care home facilities? Uh, uh, why aren't they in jail right now? They should be in jail right now, obviously, right? Like, how is this not elder abuse, right? They signed a contract that said we're going to take care of the elderly and they didn't, right? How are they not in jail? And, and even if they, a lawsuit was to occur, it would just be monetary. And because they're millionaires, they're not going to miss that money. They're not going to care. So uh, because the system is geared in such a way to protect the wealthy, right? They, the, the, the poor people will get jammed into holes and, you know, stink and die and get diseases. That's fine. Uh, uh, and the rich will just, you know, say how unfortunate it is that somebody did a lawsuit at their uh, uh, country clubs. Because that's how it works, right? Uh, until, of course, the, the, in, until the Canadian people actually grow a spine, stop acting like gullible idiots, and actually start standing up against these sociopaths, we're just going to keep getting walked over, and that's what's going to happen. So the, uh, but in the midst of this that's going on, Doug Ford is actually pushing forward legislation to continue privatizing more care facilities. So even when a scandal which reveals the complete ineptness and failure of privatization as a model, because privatization fails every single time, it doesn't work, uh, the, even in the midst of a scandal that shows that clearly, he still moves forward. Because ultimately he's a con man and a grifter and a thief, right? He doesn't give a shit about the elderly. He doesn't give a shit about the disabled. He doesn't give a shit about anyone but himself. For him, this is just an opportunity to plunder, right? For him, this is just a chance to uh, 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 grift as much money as he can out of the system. Uh, while the people who vote for him think he's the best guy in the world because he's cutting their taxes by 1%, right? Meanwhile, they'll uh, uh, bitch and moan about how, oh, it's uh, the government, they're so inept, their services are, are worse, while the guy they voted in actually literally cut the service that they're complaining about. So, like, it's just, like, stupid. It's, it's, like, Doug Ford is an evil grifter who is taking advantage of total morons who uh, uh, actually think he cares about them, when obviously he doesn't. Like, obviously he doesn't. Like, uh, you don't cut funding on disabled people, uh, uh, the poor, the elderly, uh, and pretend like you give a shit about people. Like, you obviously don't. Like, you obviously don't. And what's so uh, um, despicable about this, and Doug Ford is like a special despicable sort of person, what's so despicable about this is it's completely unnecessary, right? The only reason to cut these services is in an attempt to privatize them. Is an attempt to transfer them out of the... Yes. Uh, uh, little music break. This guy. Uh, the only reason you cut services on a government program uh, is 
if you are attempting to privatize it. And it really is that simple. Like, unless the, the, the program is literally funding money into a, into a hole, uh, and I mean, there are, of course, government programs that are like that, but fu- I shouldn't even say that. It, th- this is a great myth that exists in... Uh, so, both times the Fords were elected. So, Rob Ford was elected as the uh, mayor of Toronto. Doug Ford became the premier of, of Ontario. And both of them hired a third party to end the gravy train, right? To find the government bloat and find the waste so that they could cut it. And both times these organizations came back and said there is none, right? Because uh, you government programs are created in order to service a need. And when it is servicing a need and it's been mandated to be serviced, uh, it's serviced very well and it does a fine job of it. Uh, and costs are kept very low because you're not paying a group of uh, uh, inconsequential, pointless bureau, uh, 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 grifters and middlemen who do nothing and uh, just are there to cut a check for themselves and feel like they're big shots, right? Um, capitalists are absolutely pointless in the system. And so when the capitalists seize power, they attack these systems in order to cripple them so that the service stops being serviced, and then they can start making the argument, oh, well, I, the private investor, could do a better job of this, instead of saying the proper thing, which is, oh, we should just refund it. Like, we should just fund it properly, right? Yeah, if you cut funding for an organization, obviously it's going to, uh, its service is going to be diminished. Like, that's obvious. That's that's a black and white. Right? Like, that's very simple. Uh and so what's so stupid about this, though, is that there's absolutely no reason uh, why you need to cut this funding, right? And this falls just right back into this whole thing of the fundamental misunderstanding of by conservatives, which at this point I have to call it intentional. It has to be intentional. Uh, this intentional misunderstanding of what government is and how it operates uh, and this intentional misunderstanding like, they, they make the claim that government should act like a business. You have to be stupid to say that at this point. If you are saying government should act like a business, it is because you don't know what you're talking about, and you are stupid. Uh, and if your friends are saying this, you need to start saying government isn't a business. Government's not a business, right? Uh, businesses don't create currency, right? Right? <laughs> businesses don't write laws, <laughs> right? Like, businesses uh, uh, can't, or uh, governments can't fire citizens, right? Like, uh, 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 the government is not a business. The government exists exclusively to improve the well-being of the populace, full stop. Uh, and all conservatives and liberals say is, uh, oh, well, we will use the government to improve the lives of uh, the capitalists. Full stop. Liberals and conservatives work for capitalists, and they use the government to improve the lives of the capitalists, while simultaneously saying that we shouldn't use the government to improve the lives of the populace, because they're sociopaths who need to be ousted from power. Uh, But of course... Every conversation I have always ends up in the same point, which is that Canadians are extremely gullible, and they're very stupid, uh, and they're not actually interested in uh, doing what needs to be done in order to uh, uh, prevent this cycle of exploitation that people are caught in, right? Like... People clamor and fight for their own enslavement. They, they, they really genuinely do believe that if we were to actually improve the society, that somehow their lives would be worse. That if dental was free, if optic was free, if, if, if everything involved in your body was a free service, somehow that our lives would be diminished. Uh, that if we had a basic income, uh, if, if uh, the homeless were fed, and uh, put in houses uh, that, uh, and it, which is actually cheaper to do than the system we have right now, that somehow our lives would be worse, right? Uh, like, these fundamentally stupid ideas, which when you actually talk to the people who believe them, 
it really does break down to, uh, well, I, I just ideologically think that the poor should suffer. Uh, because you're evil. Like, period. Right? You can just be evil. Right? If you wish harm on others, if you enjoy the suffering of others, or wish to, to, to if you, or wish that others do suffer, then you're evil. <laughs> right? There's, there's no other word to use for that. You're, uh, 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 especially if you have some kind of religious ideology, like, like Ben Shapiro does. Like, Ben Shapiro is just like this dark, evil figure who uses religious ideology in order to justify the most horrible aspects of humanity while simultaneously completely ignoring his own text. Like, literally, like, he's a Jew, right? So Moses says, uh, all of these laws must be followed with love or they are irrelevant. And Ben Shapiro literally argues against love. He literally argues that we should not have empathy or compassion for, for our fellow man, uh, which makes him uh, a heretic. Uh, he's a Jewish heretic, right? Moses would expunge him from the Jewish society for saying such a thing because that's the baseline for Moses in, 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 the, in the texts. You can just open Deuteronomy, give it an actual read. Uh, it's right there. <laughs> like, Ben Shapiro is illiterate. He'll, he'll, he'll gladly say to you, uh, he'll gladly say to you, uh, oh, uh, I've really thought through what I've thought, but he's illiterate. He doesn't read. He doesn't know anything. He's actually quite stupid. And he's starting to get defeated by people like, like Joe Rogan, who, like, Joe Rogan's not an academic, right? Joe Rogan's just a guy who, like, uh, uh, isn't an idiot. He's just a dude. So, but this is what happens when you have an ideolo uh, ideological backing, right? Like, when you have a strict ideological position. Uh, and if you're like Doug Ford, right, your ideological position is very clear. The poor should suffer because they're poor, right? Uh, people have, uh, if you have a disability, it's because the universe has decided that you should have a disability. And so I, the person who does not have a disability, have every right to mock, cajole, and, and abuse and exploit your position, right? Uh, fundamentally, what they're saying is, well, God decided that you're inferior, so I should be able to exploit that. Uh, it's very much like what's going on in the states right now. Like it's their 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 prevailing ideology in the states is very clearly and obviously uh, the strong will survive. Like they're taking no precautions. There are no measures. Uh, they they clearly do not care about one another. As on a basic human level, they don't care about one another. Uh, and they sort of just shrug and go, "Well, the strong will survive." And if I die, uh, God intended it, you know? It's this, uh, it's extremely fatalistic, it's extremely nihilistic, and uh, we definitely should push back against it. Like, but unfortunately, like, Americans have that kind of revolutionary spirit, but here in Canada, like, Canadians are just cowards, and they're, they're not willing to actually stand up for anything. Like, Doug Ford could literally just piss on a homeless person in front of somebody and they would just be like, oh, I guess that homeless person had it coming. Like, uh, uh, Canadians are extremely gullible. Like, I, 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 I go into a, uh, I go into a groups that are called action groups, right? Um, NDP action group, right? These guys aren't, they're not doing anything. They're shuffling papers around one another, right? They're, 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 they're not showing up. They're not doing stuff. They're, they're not a threat. If I was a politician, I would look at these guys and go, huh, and that's, that's the extent of my concern for a group like that, who's, who's absolutely not willing to get off their asses, turn off their computer screens, and go to a guy's house and cause problems for him, to, to, uh, uh, to show up at his place of work. Like, they're, they're just not willing to do that, right? Because they're spineless. They don't have any actual fire in their belly. They don't actually care about what they're talking about. 
Because if they did care what they're talking about, they would go and get in these guys' faces. Like I'm going to do September 1st. Incidentally, if you live in the Toronto region and uh, you're interested in coming to a protest uh, on September 1st, 4 p.m. at uh, 6 Teton Hall Road, which is Doug Ford's house, uh, you should join. We'll see how many people actually show up. But, I mean, given how cowardly and spineless and gullible Canadians are, it's, it's going to be difficult. Well, I think that's the end of me. I had a beautiful day today. I hope you're having a beautiful time as well. I hope you're spending time outdoor. I hope you're... I hope, yeah, uh, find a tree. Any tree. Find a tree. That's my recommendation. Find a tree. Uh, get into nature somehow. If you can get on the beach, oh boy. Am I ever glad I live by the beach, you guys. Am I ever glad I live by the beach. All right, you guys. Good luck out there. Have a drink. Have a smoke. Get late if you can. Good luck.